currently 12.32 a.m. on a Sunday. So it's currently 12.37 a.m. and I've spent the last hour and a half getting ready for this video, outlining it, setting the lights up. And after all of that, I've made a very important decision. And that decision is that I'm going to bed because I can do that because it's my channel. So um, see you in like five seconds. And welcome back to another episode of Rob Built. I'm your host, Rob. It's the next day, I got a full night's rest last night. I'd like to say that today is an earlier night, but it is actually 11.56 p.m., but I can't put this upload off any longer, so let's roll with it. I've shared my hosting journey with y'all for the past 11 months, and I would say that the most consistent question that I run across both here on YouTube and on my one-on-one -on -one consultations with all my clients is how do I manage my property remotely? As in, how do I live in LA and manage an Airbnb property that's in Joshua Tree, in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, in Arizona, in Austin, Texas, and everywhere in between? So I decided to make today's video where I go fully in depth on how I manage to manage all my properties across the country. And when I say fully in depth, I mean roughly about 10 minutes or so because it is YouTube and you will click away if you get bored. Also, just a very quick note, if this video inspires you to become an Airbnb host, if you sign up with my link, again, in the description down below, you'll get a $60 bonus whenever you host your first stay. And the really cool, and the really cool thing, and the really cool thing about, get out of here. And also, I'm officially an Airbnb ambassador, meaning if you sign up with my link, we can work one-on-one, -on -one, so. Six and a half hours later. All right, <sighs> who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who does number two work for? And I'm officially an Airbnb ambassador, meaning that I'll get to help onboard you onto the platform and help you launch your listing, which I think is pretty neat. All right, <laughs> we did it. We did it. We've been on that take for five minutes. So a little bit of background about my personal operation. I currently have 10 short-term rental units all around the country. And then the next one to two months, I plan on having 12. And then in the next three to five months, I hope to be up to about 15. So how do I do it? It's impossible to manage 10 Airbnb units all around the country, right? Wrong, wrong. <laughs> all right. I'm going to give up on that impression. There are two components to running a successful Airbnb operation. The first one being that you need to assemble a solid team of what I call Airbnb Avengers. And the second one is automation. So let's dive into each one. But really quick, since I am kind of giving you that raw built secret sauce into my operation, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, it does help me out with the YouTube algorithm. You can also hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so that you're notified anytime that I upload any of my weird goofiness onto the interwebs. And if you want to go over and beyond, leave a comment, tell me your favorite joke from today's video. And if you can do all those things, we'll go viral together. Also feel free to follow me on Instagram at Rob Built. I try to post there as much as I can about my tiny house escapades and my Airbnb jazz. And I'm also currently knee deep inside of an Airstream renovation. So that's actually gonna be up on Airbnb soon. So you can follow the journey there. Anyway, now that we're done with the plugs, uh, the first kind of component that goes into running a successful short-term rental operation is having boots on the ground, and this is by assembling your dream team of vendors. So this squadron is gonna consist of your cleaning service, your handyman, contractor, your landscaper, and your realtor, which honestly is the cornerstone of that dream team, but we'll get into that a little bit later. By the way, I didn't even mention the drywall patch. It's done, it's painted. Patches for Ashley has been resolved. I can't believe I didn't say that earlier. So let's talk about this dream team. If I miss anything or if you feel like I'm glazing over anything, just leave me a comment down below and I'll try to clarify it for you, especially if it's in the first hour of the upload. So the first member of your Airbnb dream team is gonna be your cleaning service. These are the eyes and ears of your operation and they kind of act as your unofficial property managers. Property managers typically charge anywhere from 15 to 20% for short-term rentals. Uh, <laughs> I don't see any point in hiring them out at the moment for my current operation. And that's because I'm able to empower my cleaning service to kind of relay to me anything that needs attention so that I can quickly replace it and maintain my property. Your cleaning service is gonna be in charge of telling you, hey, your guest broke a vase or you're out of toilet paper or you have a leaky faucet. And from there, as a property owner, it's on you to address those things or hire someone else to address those things for you. So for example, when my cleaning service says, hey Rob, you're out of toilet paper, I say, great. I go to Costco.com, I order my toilet paper in bulk and I have it shipped to the house. Now, if that shipment arrives while there's a guest there, I send a message to the guest. I say, hey, we were running low on toilet paper. I just shipped it. It'll be arriving there tomorrow. If you wouldn't mind throwing that in the owner's closet, I would greatly appreciate it or a lot of the times I actually luck out and it actually arrives when my cleaning crew is there so they're able to put those things in the closets for me but really I would say one of the more important tasks of a cleaning service is to tell you whenever a guest damages or breaks anything in your Airbnb 
Airbnb and other short-term rental platforms have very specific rules about when you can file a claim. You have to do it within 24 hours or before the next guest checks in. So it's on your cleaning service to relay that information to you quickly so that you can file your claim. I would say that they're arguably the most important aspect of your short-term rental operation because your business thrives on reviews. And the number one thing that gets called out in reviews is the cleanliness, whether it was exceptionally clean or subpar. And you don't wanna be in that subpar category, but if you have 100 reviews and they all say that your place is sparkling clean, well, that's gonna to lead to more bookings for you, especially during a pandemic. If there's one thing I can say, it's don't cheap out on your cleaning service. You get what you pay for. So pay someone a fair living wage and I promise you will see the results of it. You dig? Next, you've got your handyman or your handywoman. And you know, they're basically gonna be in charge of repairing anything that needs to be repaired. Pretty standard, I know. Now you of course can fix or maintain a lot of things yourself, but if you have other units, it's just not worth your time to run to your house, to swap out a light bulb or change a, you know, a, a wax ring on a toilet or anything like that. Because what you wanna be doing is instead of saving that $25 by swapping out an AC filter, you wanna be figuring out how to make more than $25 with that time that you'd be saving. So find someone that you know, like, and trust, and can depend on, and accept their price. Don't nickel and dime them. Pay your handy people, again, a fair living wage so that they're excited to come work for you, and not just that, but prioritize you and their roster of clients and address all of your concerns quickly. Now, I just happen to have a dream set up in Joshua Tree where the cleaning service is a wife, a husband, and the husband's mom. Well, the husband is actually very handy and he's able to actually fix or address anything on my property and he just bills me for it afterwards. Now, again, sometimes those prices are a little higher than I wanna pay, but he's already there and he's able to fix it right before the next guest checks in so it's always worth it for me to pay just a little bit more to have that done quickly and if it's something that's out of their wheelhouse most handy people are usually pretty good at recommending a licensed vendor or contractor that can properly fix that issue for you which leads me to number three your contractor this is whenever doo-doo hits the fan and you need a pro to come in and address a really huge concern on your property say a roof leak which has actually happened to me twice in Joshua Tree well this is where a contractor comes in handy but it's not just that it's always nice to have a contractor in your roster that can help with bigger projects than a handyman could tackle, like remodeling a bathroom or a kitchen or building a pergola or removing a load bearing wall, for example. At the end of the day, you need a contractor that you can trust. So I definitely recommend interviewing them, vetting them, getting firsthand referrals if you can, so that you can trust them to do these really big jobs when you're away, especially if you live thousands of miles away like I do for some of my properties. And now we're into our fourth role, which is your landscaper, who also serves a really important role in your entire operation because they're essentially in charge of maintaining the exterior of your house. If you have grass, you need someone to mow it, right? And if you have weeds, you need someone to pull them. If you have a body that you need to bury, you need someone to dig the holes. Wait, what? What? Huh? What? Huh? And lastly, the fifth person in this dream team of yours is your realtor, who, as I mentioned earlier, could be considered the cornerstone of your operation for many reasons. Now, I work pretty closely with my realtor in Joshua Tree, and guess who was the person that referred me to my rockstar cleaning service, handyman, contractor, landscaper, and everything in between? Yeah, you guessed it, it was my realtor. It's their job to know these things, right? Like, they kind of encounter so many vendors during the sale process, they always have to know good handyman, contractors, people that can change out roofs or windows or anything like that, so you'd be surprised at how comprehensive an experienced realtor's contact list can be. I think that if you know someone that's worked firsthand with a vendor, that goes a very long way compared to a random review that you read online. So if you can get a firsthand referral, I always recommend that. And by the way, I will be covering this in my upcoming Fundamentals of Airbnb course. And I actually cover this topic extensively in my How to Set Up a Glamping Business course. If you're interested in learning more about those courses or signing up for them, sign up for my course email list down below. I'll leave it in the description. And as soon as I have any updates or as soon as it goes live, you will be the first to know, I promise. Now let's get into the second crucial aspect of any successful short-term operation, and that's automation. And that's because the more you scale up, the more you're gonna have to manage, meaning the less time you're gonna have to carry out certain tasks. So it behooves you to automate as much of your business as you can. Did these hand motions even make sense with that? For example, your cleaners, right? You can't afford to spend several hours texting back and forth and coordinating cleans with them every single time that you have someone checking in and checking out of your place. That's something that needs to be automated and there are actually a couple ways that you can approach that. One way is a reminder service that basically keeps your cleaners updated and reminds them whenever they have a clean schedule. I personally use a service called Your Porter. Your Porter basically sends out a text message to my cleaning service whenever someone books, whenever someone checks in, and whenever someone checks out. 
That way they have all of my cleanings on their radar. And that way if someone books last second, they get a text message straight to their phone the moment it happens. Another way you can approach this is by making them an actual co-host on your listing so they have complete access to your calendar. They can actually see it visually and see when people check in and check out. You can also export your Airbnb calendar to their phone, sync it up to their phone calendar app. So they have every single reservation notated on their app and it's super easy to access. Again, there are a lot of different ways that you can automate the communication between you and your cleaners. Experiment with it, see what works for you, see what works for your personal workflow. Now something else that can be a really big time suck in your operation is messaging. And this is also something that you can fully automate. Again, there are many different platforms that you can use to automate your messaging, such as Your Porter or Smart BNB. And they basically use AI to respond to guests on your behalf because why not hire a robot to do your job for you? I know I have. So basically it goes like this. Whenever a guest books, they get a message from you that is sent from your AI bot, that your surrogate of sorts, that says, hey John, I see that you booked on December 23rd for two people. Here are your check-in instructions. If you have any questions before your stay, please let me know. And then John checks in and the next day, your AI robot sends another message that says, hey John, I hope you're enjoying your stay and getting settled in. Do you have any questions for me? Is there any way that I can help make your stay even better? Great. They finish out the reservation, and then the day before they check out, hey John, hope you've enjoyed your time at the chalet. Just a friendly reminder that checkout is at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Here are your checkout instructions. Leave all bodies outside. Your friend, Rob Bilt. Now you don't wanna use your automated messaging as a crutch and you don't wanna get lazy. It's very easy to do that when all the messages are being sent out automatically. You still wanna get in there whenever guests are asking questions and responding to them. I actually don't automate all of my messages. About half of my properties are automated. The other half are pretty hands-on just because I have a personal connection with a few properties that I just like to be as hands-on as I can be. So you'll have to decide what's right for you. If you have one property, sending out messages is no big deal. But again, for me, at this point I have 10, so it just behooves me. Am I just using my hands a lot? I'm sorry. So it behooves me to automate a decent portion of my 10 listings so that I'm not in the weeds of messaging every day. And we're back in the next day. Well, actually, I should make sure that I'm in focus, which is the whole reason that I'm in this mess anyway. Unfortunately, I finished recording at 2 a.m. last night, got it all done, it was all beautiful, and I was out of focus for the entire last segment of this video, which is just awesome. So the last component, I'm just gonna touch on this very lightly of automating your business and managing it from afar is using dynamic pricing. There are plenty of tools you can use such as Beyond Pricing or Price Labs. They basically adjust your pricing every single day to determine what the optimal price point is for your property on any given day, depending on the demand of the market that week. And that's it, that's it. That is a very quick 10 minute crash course. Caleb, is it 10 minutes? Crash course on how to manage your property from afar, how to automate your systems. Again, I'm gonna be covering this in great detail in my 10 hour courses. If you're interested in learning about something like that, sign up for my course update list down below. I get so many DMs, emails, messages from people that wanna get into this business and they're so scared of you know how hard it's gonna be to manage a property from afar and they feel like they can't do it. And I just wanna let you know that I'm just a regular guy. I'm not particularly smart, but I work hard and this this whole business and, and automating everything and managing something from a far away, it's not hard, okay? But it is hard work and there is a difference. Like people try to get me on that technicality on one of my other videos where I said that. Hard is engineering, rocket science. Like that stuff is actually technical stuff that's very difficult. Hard work just means that you have hustle and perseverance and you're able to kind of work through details and solve problems, right? And this business is all about critical thinking and problem solving. So if you feel like you're a good problem solver, I promise you, you can do this. And that pretty much wraps today's episode of Raw Built. If you found this content like at all useful, uh, you can directly contribute to my success as a growing creator on YouTube by hitting the like button, subscribing, and leaving me a comment about really anything. And you know, was this helpful for you? Is there something that I missed? Is, is there anything that I can answer for you? I really am here as a resource. Again, I'm an Airbnb ambassador, so sign up with my link and I can help onboard you onto the Airbnb platform and work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, or you can book a consultation, link in the description. But other than that, uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next episode of Raw Built. Not ah, fake out. Nah, I'm, I'm gonna go actually for real. All right, bye. Bye-bye.